Sri Lankan team fly back to Queensland, Australia to start their World Cup tour in Australian soil. The match was held at Ray Mitchell Oval on February 28, 1992. Before this match both teams met only one occasion in World Cups. That is in the second World Cup back in 1979 in the Manchester City. That match was written in the history books because that is the first time an associate cricket nation has beaten ICC full member nation in an ICC event. In that historical event Sri Lanka beats Indian team consist of Sunil Gavaskar, Dilip Vengusrakar, Visvanath, Venkatrugvan by 47 runs. On the other hand, this is Team India's second World Cup game. After a nail-biting encounter, they lost to England by 9 runs on the opening day. This final Indian pair determined to run this close. Going back, at long on, back, back, and not far enough, it's into the stands. And that helps beautifully here. This is what uh, one day cricket, dare I say it, is all about. The pressure of the final balls and Chris Lewis coming in again. Very well bowled. Oh, now it's all over. Ian Botham doesn't take any chances, runs in, takes the bails off himself. That was a good piece of bowling by Chris Lewis. Energy, I think, uh, deciding that he really needed to take the strike, didn't run, and uh, he's been told where he went wrong now by Srinath. Mate, you should have run. It was a tough tour to India because they were playing in Australia since mid November 1991. They have played couple of warm-up games, five test matches and ten one-day matches with both Australia and West Indies before they begin their World Cup journey. Away from home nearly three months participating in too much of cricket pushed Team India to a tough situation during this tour. And Australia losing Jones, bowled by Kapildev, well he was bowled by Kapildev in the test of Yaba. In the air, and that's our court. Well taken, he doesn't drop many. One of the best slip fieldsmen in the world. Mark War latching onto that one, his ninth catch in the series. Hold him, yes, he's gone, that's well bowled. The stumps are down, he's left it as well. That's an unbelievable. Trikan getting a bit stirred up there by McDermott and Healy, and then all of a sudden leaves one, which is far too close, and over go the stumps. Big break, doesn't play a shot, it's going to be close, he's got him, he's forward too, so another LBW, it's all happening here at the Adelaide Oval. Saka's not happy, Merv points to the dressing room, umpire Hare judges him LBW, and he departs very slowly and happily to the dressing room, but Australia right on top now, 4 for 102. Yeah, that's well fielded. Well, would you believe it? The run out, Azra Din has stayed. And why man's raker went, I've absolutely no idea. But now, which one is going? Man's is going, Azra Din stayed in his crease. Man's raker run out again. I've heard that phrase before. Well, it was his call. This was the ninth match of the competition. At this moment due to their healthy net run rate England holding the table top position pushing New Zealand down to number 2. Sri Lanka, with their win against Zimbabwe was at number 5 and without any win India was at number 7. As always, Indian batting attack easily faces the spinners. Hence Sri Lankan camp decided to rotate out Don Anuraziri and they brought extra pace man to the side. So Kapila Wajgun award and join back to the playing 11. Due to his injury in the New Zealand game dashing opening batsman Athula Samaraskara had to take a rest in this match. So all-rounder Chinli Kahathura Singha called to take the opening batsman position and this is his World Cup debut. From Indian camp due to his low-balling performance against England they dropped out medium pace man Sabrato Bunarji and brought up left arm spinner Venkat Puthi Rayu. Also their vice captain Ravi Shastri was rested and 21-year-old Gujarashan Ajajadeja was called the side. Ajay was a good middle order batsman and a sharp fielder and this is his debut match to represent India. And he's gone for that one, this is in the air, this could be out. It is, oh brilliantly caught, absolutely magnificently caught by Mirok. The Deja coming in there and what a catch that is. 
RJ Jaden coming in from mid off. Now, you have a look at this. McKay had a history of heavy rain, especially from December to March. Even the location was so remote that the match was not even televised. Unfortunately, it rained heavily from the very onset. It did not seem that there would be any play before lunch. The organizers, desperate not to let the first international match on the ground go waste, used helicopters to dry the pitch. It helped dry the pitch, but perhaps not as fast as the organizers would have wanted to. When the match eventually resumed, the umpires had no option but to reduce the match to a 20-over contest. Sri Lankan skipper Aravinda won the toss and he asks India to bat first in the wet conditions. So, India's plan is to fire up from over number one to put some big total to give scoreboard pressure to Sri Lanka batting lineup. Sri Kunth have a good history for meeting Sri Lankan attack in the past. Oh, he slipped over! Dear me, and that shows how wet it is down there, and it's gone through for four. So for a loud appeal, and umpire Julius Bulchins from Sri Lanka, unimpressed. I thought that looked a jolly good shout. I wonder if he got a nick on it. It certainly was. Well, I thought that looked plum, and I maybe the umpire felt that he'd got an inside edge on it. it but it looked bad. to me to be absolutely plum. It wasn't bad, was it? Goodness me, he wasn't even interested, was he? Oh, over the top, big hit, and that is six. Superb hit, Chris Shrikanth. Not a big crowd here, but uh, pretty obvious who they're supporting. Well, Campbell Dove that was, and it was a marvellous stroke. Just like Ian Sorry Botham, watch it, I say a marvellous stroke, it was a bit of a slogaroo. But he's a powerful player, and he hit it away wide over wide mid on. Oh, he slashes at that one, stands up, crashes it through the covers. Possibly could have gone anywhere, but it went in the right place. Krishnamachari Shrika, it's 4 more. Since the match was restricted to 20, Overs Indian Camp surprised everyone by deciding to send Kapil Dev as the opener to support their dasher Krish Shrikanth. It was the first time the legend would bat at the top for his country. Kapil Dev was in playing 11 when they face a shameful defeat to Sri Lanka back in 1979. He was just 20 by that time. And it was a good opportunity for him to take the revenge from Sri Lankan camp. Since there were no TV coverage, like his historical 175 runs not out innings against Zimbabwe in 1983, this historical moment too ended without leaving any digital footage to Kapil Dev. That one, this is in the air, this could be out. It is, oh, brilliantly caught. Absolutely magnificently caught by Mugo. Oh, that's beautifully struck. That's a magnificent shot. Champaka Ramanaka starts behalf of Sri Lankan side with his right arm medium fast bowling. And really tucked Rod Latham up, cut him in half. As we're seeing here, this ball did seem back a lot. It was bold, it was a quicker ball. He put a lot more effort into that. It was well bowled that. Rod Latham was a little lucky that ball bounced. Shri Kunth defended the first ball, and managed a single off the next before the skies opened again. The players ran back to the pavilion. This second rainfall washing out the game completely, and once past the stipulated time, David Shepard and Ian Robinson had to declare the match abandoned. Since then Ray Mitchell Oval is yet to host another international match. Of one day internationals, where at least one ball has been bowled, the match remains the shortest ODI till date. So. Due to this match cancellation both teams were awarded one point each, which gave Sri Lanka room to climb the ladder to third position and India still stagnating in seventh position. After the cosy event Sri Lanka fly back to New Zealand to meet up South Africans for the very first time.